All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to cover something real quick. Now, I know that you might wonder why I don't wear a shirt for this archery series. There's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the primary one is archery is really good for your physique. Now, I'm not one who likes to show off or anything, but, and I've got nothing to show off, really. I'm old. I don't work out anymore. Um, when I was young, I played football. I did a lot of martial arts, a lot of sports, a lot of that kind of stuff. I mean, even today, I'm reasonably flexible. I mean, I'm one of those people, like, standing on one foot ain't exactly a problem because I spent a lot of time doing kicking routines. Um, and if you're one of those people where you grew up doing that kind of stuff, even old, even without stretching anymore, I can still kick most guys in the face without any trouble at all. Um, and I, I don't. <laughs> I don't go getting into fights, but that's from years of training. And even though I don't practice it, it's still there. And that balance level where I'm solid in a given position is still there. Um, and the musculature gets weak over time is what happens. And you lose flexibility and all that stuff. And with archery, I find that it's really helping my upper body because you're putting pressure in all those places. And it used to be that, um, you know, I had a, a pretty frumpy physique, uh, if you'd call it that, uh, when I started this series. And the reason I did, well, <laughs> I'm 50, uh, almost, and I, I'm old, okay? So basically what happened when I was young, I was very hovered into martial arts, I did a lot of training, and then I got to the point, you notice I've got a little hook here, so I can reach through with one finger and grab it while I'm holding my bow. I don't know why I did that, but I did. Um, and I've got... It was actually accidental, it's just there. No knock, okay? So this is very much a native style, but of course I've got my pin, this has worked out great. And what I've got here is the little metal shelf guides one fletching, while the pin actually guides the other and it helps it to rotate, it works really great. So I'm just gonna pop a couple of arrows up here <coughs> and shoot this bow. Uh, this bow is now officially finished. Now I did say early on, I wouldn't finalize it really until I did a few things. Now, you guys always see me shooting pinch draw, so in a second I'm going to cover why I'm not, and there's no particular reason. I just, I shoot both ways, and so for today's demonstration, partly to help you see proper form and all that kind of stuff, uh, I can't even really see the target right now, so I'm actually going to put a separate light on the target for me, and try and put it off so it's not affecting you guys, but I can actually see. Uh, and so, that's good. Now that I'm set up, I'm going to verify my bow. Now, a two-finger draw is really handy, and this uh, particular shelf, being leaned the way it is, is really nice. And even if I put the bow on an angle, uh, I do find that helps when you're drawing it. And then I'll really come to level. Now, you can see that arrow jumped pretty hard, right? And it did. And it's one of those things where even though the arrow was set up correctly, and the shelf is set up correctly, and the bow is set up correctly, this bow, because of the type of handle that it has, it's very flexible. You have to be very particular in your draw and be perfect in order to fire nice, clean, accurate shots. Now that was, and it was close to the center, which is good. So I'm just going to fire a quick group uh, this way, and then I'll show it to you after. Because this bow is now pretty much done. Now these are arrows that were heavy enough that the poundage this was at, it, 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 and these arrow lengths, it just wouldn't shoot them at all. And now, I mean, I can shoot right at the top of the target. They just come up really nicely and have no trouble hitting anywhere on it without really having it be any kind of trouble. So I'm just going to shoot here. And that's on a, a less than full draw. Now, this bow is capable of a 32-inch draw and is right around 60 pounds at that point. But at this point, with this short a draw, these are 27-inch draw length, I think, or 26, depending on the arrow I grab in draw length. And that's about all I'm getting there, okay? Now, it's come off pretty hard to the right. So what I want to cover with these types of bows is Anybody who is going to build uh, one of these fiberglass rod bows and, a, and a, like a leather wrap handle like that, it has a lot of twists. So what you need to do is get the exact precise way that you hold the bow 
exactly the same every time, and you don't want your hand like this, because you're going to do this, and right away, look what you do to the arrow. You're throwing it over, or you're going to do this, and that's what I tend to do, and it tends to throw, you can see right there, it throws it right off. So watch carefully uh, on this. I tried to give you guys a bunch of draws without me really paying attention to it, because I know what will happen from shooting with it. I have to be incredibly precise and smooth. But when I am, it suddenly starts to get a little more accurate. So I love this bow partly because it's deadly quiet. It's so quiet. I mean, if there were two deer next to each other and I shot the first one, I could technically take the second one before the first one knew what hit it. I mean, it's, it's so quiet. You never hear it. Now the trick is, I just have to be accurate in my uh, draw point and in my aim, okay? So I don't want to make too tight a group here, but I'm going to show you each one after I shoot it, and then I'll show you the technique. Now one of the reasons I don't like to wear a shirt here is partly because it interferes with your seeing the effect it has on my physique over time. Clearly, if I was wearing that, you wouldn't see that. Partly, I wanted you to, shoot to see that I can shoot these fairly accurately, with a standard draw, because if you think I can only do it with my draw or whatever, and the bow is made for my draw or whatever, it's not. It's nothing to do with that. This bow build is standard. So what I'll say is this knock is broken. If you have a knock that doesn't pinch the string, you can still do a two-finger draw. But what you want to do is grab the back of it. I like to do a three-finger pinch, though, and just make sure it's firmly planted. Now I'm going to level it. I'm going to draw, and then I'm going to go two-finger. Not quite. If you yeah, because if you don't, like I did that time, it went way off to the right. And was so far off to the right, I knew it wasn't going to be anywhere near the target. But this is going to fix that. So hold on. Let me make sure we're in proper alignment here. In fact, these ones, I'm just going to shoot this way, guys, just because one of the reasons I like my draw is it's so much easier to do that. Now, keep in mind, I don't really want to ruin my arrows here at all. But any shot where I'm not exactly perfectly lined straight and very carefully lining it up, lining it up, and holding the shot, it's, it really won't be very accurate at all. What's hilarious about that is it won't really matter what kind of tip it has or what the fletchings are like. None of that matters anymore. These are all good fletchings. The tips are all, the arrows are all balanced and shot many times. They work very well. What you got to do if you want to make a nice tight groove and be accurate is be able to hold it very steady. Now, the problems have come in several places. One, they tend to want to come up and down like that. Without a knock, it, it really makes it more challenging to hold it in place. Now, one of the reasons I like traditional archery without a knock is because that is the traditional method. But that does not mean that I cannot punch the target. And this is why I like my method. Traditionally, I find for myself that I am more accurate with the two-finger draw than is a pinch draw and releasing right there off my thumb. So this one, because it has a proper knock, I'm going to fire that way as well. But also, ah, uh, that was beautiful. But I kind of nicked another arrow coming in, which is unfortunate. You guys probably heard that. And it kind of came off to the side. It hit here, but it was coming for here. And it hit one of these and went whoop, and hit right here, right at the, uh, sorry, right here, right at the edge of it. And then went like this. So, you know, I'm going to reshoot that one, but you guys get the idea. I mean, it's fairly accurate. Uh, in either draw case, I can draw both methods and it's very accurate. I do like this bow. It's been really great, which is why I'm showing it to you now. I did say from the beginning, I don't really recommend that you build this one. If this is, you know, if you're trying to build yourself a good, reliable bush bow, don't build this one. I built this to practice my longbow drawing technique and my general shooting technique. That one was a little high to the left. And what I'm trying to show you here is that it can look perfect. You can have the right draw. You can use smooth, proper technique and draw, lean to the side, make sure that I'm really aiming. 
and look at this. It might look the exact same draw from your perspective as the one that punched the middle of the target, but I assure you, it is, except for the alignment of my hands. With this, the amount of flex it has here is just way, way too much. So again, I prefer this method. It's one of the reasons I like it, because it helps you to keep more steady. And even if it does come off, I just did it quick to show you, I generally get it less off, even if I'd make the same error, than it would be if I was doing it two finger over under. So I, I do like the pinch draw. Now I'm gonna do it properly, and then I'll show you the difference. Now, I don't know if that looked the same to you guys or not, but you heard that it kind of did the same thing and hit. And again, it was on its way in here, which is getting to the point where I always said, don't shoot four arrows, guys, shoot three. So I'm going to leave those three as a group. I'm going to pull them. And what was technically the worst arrow was this one. And it's what I always like to do. I'm going to take the three that were keep heading in the dead center kind of thing. When I want them to, I put them aside, and this one, I'm just going to shoot it. Now, this is another one with a broken knot, guys, so I'm shooting this way, but very carefully, very smoothly to the eye, and then let go. And even then, I came high into the right, but if you watch my draw carefully, you'll see where the mistake was, because it, I was saying nice and smooth, but I wasn't doing it. Okay, so you want to be smooth, smooth. So I'm going to check. I didn't even look last time. Now you check, smooth, steady, onto the target, and then you shoot. Only, I did two things. You notice there I punched myself in the lower eye socket with my release. That's not good. You gotta have a smooth, clean release. One of the keys to archery, to good archery, is a smooth release. Okay, so what did I do wrong? It still came really high, but on target but nowhere near the center of the turn. It jumped up way high, like incredibly high. So I'm gonna flip my fletching and see how it responds to that. It could be that, let's try that. The exact same result. Almost hit in the exact same spot, in fact, just a little over. Not only did it jump up as high, but it came over just a touch right. So clearly that was not the uh, answer. Just what I said, steady, steady. Watch the tip of the arrow, watch the arrow as it comes along the bow to make sure it's not being bowed or shifted or moved and let go. And what happens? It comes off in the exact same spot. This particular arrow, the way that the shelf is made, it's not so much that it's a problem, it's just that this arrow wasn't fletched for this bow. And it really isn't ideal, to be honest with you, in either position for this closest is right here actually so I'm just going to shoot like that but now if I'm really careful and I keep this alignment see you tend to do this one way or the other and you have to be really really careful to keep it directly in front of you and draw to there and all of a sudden it's a much more accurate thing I mean that shot was only about a quarter of an inch or half an inch above the turret about the, uh, the white square so that's reasonable but even still, we're pretty close range here. I'm only about 18 feet. But if I draw just a little harder and I actually go out of my way, it doesn't actually have any trouble hitting the mark. It's pretty darn accurate. Um, and I can shoot over and over and over again and have it be very consistent. But anytime you see me actually hit the target, It's that I have to really draw very carefully and point very carefully. But even then, that draw wasn't a hit on the turn. It was a miss because it may have looked good, but in the end, you have to be perfect. And I didn't even check my height because there's no knock. Doing traditional archery is so much harder, guys. And it's one of the reasons that I like it. Um, if I have a knock, I will bore out the center of that target really, 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 really tight. 
fast if I'm just aiming for it. And I don't like to do it because in the end what it means is I wreck my targets really, really quickly. And practice is where it's at, really. But this is the worst arrow, right? So in the end, I want to try and identify what's wrong with it. Now, the way that this one is spined, this flesh should sit here. Now, the problem is, I now have what I would call a complex rest, where I have it in two stages. There's actually two sections designed to catch the two different fletchings. So I'm actually going to put one of each of those on the fletching, and then I'm going to try it, and I'm going to see which is more accurate. Now that one, I aimed pretty low. That came just above the camera, and it's pretty accurate to where I am. So we're going to try it again, like that. A little thin cut. Lines up. Is that perfect? Ooh, that wasn't too bad, but high. I could feel my release was wrong, too. And this is the other thing. These bows are so sensitive, and this bow is so good at translating any force into the arrow that absolutely anything you do will absolutely be translated into that arrow, like with precision. So you kind of have to do one of those, where you have to really carefully line it up and really carefully aim and draw. So I'm just going to shoot a group here. And what I'll do is the arrows that are like this guy, I will shoot pinch method. Or shall I say, a less traditional draw. <laughs> Actually, I want to reshoot that. That one came pretty far off. Did you see my release there? It was pretty bad. My aim was good. The way that I had it actually lined up on the shelf looked good, too. But I'm going to try it the traditional way here. You can hear it hit the other arrow. So those are pretty accurate. I, I went to put those right up against each other, and they absolutely are on the left side of the target. I'm gonna try and pin these two up against each other on the right side of the target. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. That was so high into the right, but did you watch my release? My aim was good, but when I released, I did this. But you can't do that. That's not a release. That's a joke. Can't do that. So I'm gonna line this up. I have already seen also that it shoots well with this uh, section I made to shoot inside. This one sits really nicely this way. I shot it the other way last time just to see, but it was way off, so we're not gonna do that. Now you could go this way, but really you don't want to do that. And the reason is you're torquing the bow, you're twisting it. And this is the traditional problem with the, with, the, with the method most people use, okay? When you do a two-finger draw, you do this. You draw, and then you pull it over to your cheek. Well, now you're way off. And when you let that go, it's going to be way off. And so what you need to do, if you're going to practice that draw, is change your stance and your hold position, okay, from what you would do if you're doing a pinch draw. So I'm going to stand so the bow is to the side of me rather than native style, where it would be directly to my eye, okay? I'm going to stand to the side. I'm going to hold it the way I designed this bow to be held, is in both positions. So I, I like this bow a lot. It's one of the reasons it's my favorite. It's because I set it up to shoot any way I want. And I can draw it in my eye. And I aimed right over the camera there, and it aimed dead center in line with the camera, believe it or not, and just right pretty much where I aimed it. So, that's a good sign. I'm going to aim it now for the white square. Ooh, missed. Just tie it right. But did you see my release? My release wasn't what you would call, well, proper. <laughs> 
So let me show you the property. Okay, only I still came off a little bit and it went into the exact same hole. And the reason it did is because I did the exact same motion on my release. Pay attention to that. I've always said if it's true, it's consistent, it's scientific, you'll be able to repeat it. So I did. But this one, I took a little more time, I took a little more care. And I tried not to come off to the left, but not to hit my other arrows. And it came a little high onto the target, but it came pretty much in line with the other arrows, nice and centered. That's pretty cool. I don't really like to get too close to my other arrows, so I don't ruin them. But that's just to show you guys. I mean, your technique is everything, especially on a bow like this. And it's so good for that, that it makes you really, really practice that technique because even that shot looked good, but it was exactly perfectly in line with the other arrow and an inch higher, <coughs> which is great. It grouped itself nicely with its mate there. And it's really important. You see the pull I did on the release? Look at the result. Way off, high and right. Why? A lot of guys are doing this, so I wanted to show you guys. Because my natural release before I started training myself was like that. Uh, and I was at an arrow camp where I was being taught the professional kind of methods, guys. And so what I will tell you is, um, this is, I when I'm shooting two finger, I start like this, three finger pinch. I line everything up, I draw out, come to my eye, and I fire my shot, okay? Now, I did the same exact pull-off release high into the right. And what do you see? High into the right. And it will be like that consistently every single time. The difference between this time and last time was I pulled hard. But there's nothing wrong with the bow. It's not the knock. I don't have one. They didn't come off on the wrong elevation drastically. I didn't screw up that 